And the people of God said, I welcome everyone in Jesus' name. I pray today will be a blessed time for every one of us and for the whole church in Jesus' name. I need to say something before we begin. Is that all right? On the 6th of June, some young people uh, did something they were excited about. And some of us old, old people, older than me, we maybe rebuked them directly or indirectly. I even heard that one of those who played instrument, um, you know, singing happy birthday, understand these are young people. And sometimes young people need to express their joy and their excitement in the way we adults may not have thought we should express our own joy. Well, we're all happy. Why are you not happy? But you didn't express it. You did yours in a quiet, matured, decent, weighty manner, which is good. But those young people acted like they're young people. And I want to register my appreciation publicly for all of them. Those who sang, those who played instruments, and those who were excitedly dramatized, whatever, I appreciate them. God appreciates them, and will praise the Lord for them. And if it so happens that you know any of them, or you had authority, spiritual authority on any of them, and any of them was removed from doing what they were doing in the church, uh, please, for love's sake and for unity's sake, restore all of them. And uh, young people, we love you, we appreciate you, and we're looking forward to you doing more for the glory of God and joining us in evangelism. I'm bringing your own method, I'm bringing your own ideas, and some of our own ideas as older people that are not working, if you come forward and you give us good, good ideas, we'll replace our old ideas which are not working with your new ideas. Praise the Lord. Church, are you all right? Let's encourage our children. Our children will go farther than we have gone in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name for this glorious time. Thank you, Lord, for your servants, your, your workers, our own leaders. We're asking, Lord, that you grant us more insight into the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that you teach us and lead us to the death of your word today. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Tonight, we're talking about a follow-up. That word follow-up actually means discipleship. Converts have been won into the kingdom. And now we who are... Uh, soul winners and witnesses of the Lord and the preachers of the word of God will follow up on them to disciple them and make them stable and steadfast in the work and in the kingdom of God. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, reading from verse 4, it says, So then, so they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. What were they doing as they went? Paul and Barnabas. Look at verse 5. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God. That's what they did. And they brought converts into the kingdom. That's what they did. And many of the people repented of their sins and they turned to the Lord Jesus Christ. They became converts. And let's look at chapter 15, verse 3. In chapter 15, 
verse 3, it tells us that the went to all the places, to all the churches now, and being brought on their way by the church. They passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. Declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. They communicated the gospel. They preached the gospel. They evangelized the Gentiles. And that resulted in repentance, faith in Christ, and conversion. And when they told, they declared about the conversion of the Gentiles, they caused great joy unto all the brethren. Now we're looking at verse 36. In verse 36, it says, And some days after, that is, after they had come back from the evangelistic field, they had stayed in the church, they were worshiping with the church and serving in the church. Some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren. That is those converts who have come to know the Lord. Paul the Apostle said to Barnabas, his partner is so winning. His partner in ministry. His partner in evangelism. His partner in outreach. He said unto him, let us go again. They had gone before. That was for conversion and establishing the churches they now wanted to go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the lord and see how they do that is the follow-up and that is what is referred to as discipleship he wanted to disciple them so that they can be steadfast in the faith so that they can be established in the faith and so that they will also be so matured they'll be able to follow up on others the challenge of making disciples for Christ that's the topic today the challenge of making disciples for Christ we're looking at three things here number one the making of trusted dedicated disciples the making of trusted dedicated disciples. Number two, the marks of transferable dynamic discipleship. discipleship. The marks of transferable discipleship. That is, as you do it, as Paul the Apostle did it with Silas, because Barnabas eventually did not go with him, as Paul and Silas did it with Timothy. Timothy joined them too. Now, you could transfer all that dynamic discipleship and dynamic method and dynamic model of Paul, Silas, and Timothy. That's why we call it the marks of transferable dynamic discipleship. Number three, the means of teaching, touching different disciples. The means, the methods, the modes of teaching and touching different disciples. Let's look at number one. Number one, we have the making of trusted, dedicated disciples. When people have been born again, they ought to be integrated with the body, with the, with the church. They ought to be integrated with the assembly of Bible-believing saints of God who are worshiping the Lord. And that's what's called the making of those disciples dedicated and trusted, making them to now on their own, voluntarily and, and diligently following after the way of the Lord. Acts chapter 14, verse 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. The Lord had opened the door of faith and many people had believed on the Lord and they had come to know the Lord. He had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, it tells us, And they, and there they abode long time with the disciples. You see these preachers, they were not just isolated evangelists, not attached 
to any church. They were attached to the church. And you remember in chapter 13, it was from the church they were sent out and they went to do the work. And coming back, they came back to the church and long time they were with the disciples. Underline so the word disciples, long time they did abide with the disciples. This is exactly what Jesus Christ had said in Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Look at the commission of the Great Commission in verse 19. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That word teach is to instruct, is to enlighten, is to preach the gospel, is to reveal the good news of the fact that Jesus died and he rose again and for justification. And that if they will believe in their heart that Jesus rose from the dead and that Jesus Christ paid the price and the penalty of their sin, as they believe that they confess him as Lord and Savior they will be saved and Jesus said go everywhere and let everybody know about my death about my burial about my resurrection and about the purpose of that resurrection that they will believe go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost when you have spoken to them and they have repented and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, then that is salvation. That is being born again. They are now baptized in water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost to identify with the death and burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now it says in verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. That's where discipleship comes in. That's where uh, follow-up comes in. You've taught them that led them to salvation. You are now to teach them and that will lead them to being established with the church. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. And that's why Paul the Apostle now, leaning back on the words of Jesus Christ, said, We have gone and we have preached the gospel. And many people have come to the Lord. Let us go again to the places where have preached the word of God and see how the do and supply what may be lacking in their faith. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, conviction of sinners by the Spirit. Conviction of sinners by the Spirit. Number two, conversion from sinning by the Savior. Conversion from sinning by the Savior. Number three, commitment as saints to the scriptures when we go out the very first thing is that as we preach the word of god there will be conviction in the hearts of the people look at uh, number one conviction of sinners by the spirit john chapter 16 verse 7 in john chapter 16 verse 7 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, unto you. Then in verse 8, it says, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. When he, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit is come, he will, he will reprove the world of sin. When we preach, we need to make the people understand by the inspiration and enlightenment of the Holy Spirit that they are sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
we need to make them understand uh, the problem the disease the uh, the evil in their lives before we can introduce the saviors to them if you just talk about the savior you talk about the deliverer you talk about the redeemer and yet they do not understand what they are being saved from and they do not know the danger and the damnation that their sin will bring them to they will not appreciate inviting christ into their lives for them it will be purposeless that's why we rely on the holy spirit that he will reprove the world those who have not known the lord of sin and of righteousness and of judgment they need to understand that judgment is coming it is appointed unto men who wants to die and after this the judgment look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says of sin because they believe not on me they have not believed on the lord that's why they remain in their sins in verse 10 it tells us in verse 10 of righteousness because i go to my father and you see me no more. Now verse 11 tells us of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. The God of this world is Satan. Is, is under judgment and all who follow Satan all who live in sin as servants of Satan they'll be judged with Satan eventually and if they don't repent before they die they will spend eternity with Satan in the lake of fire in hell forever and ever that will bring conviction to them it is after that conviction we can now show them God is love. God will forgive you. But you have to repent of what you are sorry about. In Acts chapter 2 verse 37. Acts chapter 2 verse 37. And when they heard this, they were preached in their heart. They were convicted in their heart. They knew they had sinned. They knew they had done evil. And that sin will plunge them into damnation, into eternal condemnation, except something will happen except they are saved except that the grace of god and the mercy of god and the love of god will come to them and forgive them when they had this they were preached in their heart and they said unto peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do we feel guilty what shall we do we're convicted what shall we do we're convinced of what we have done to be wrong what shall we do the condemnation is sitting squarely on our shoulders and we have heavy hearts because of what we have done what shall we do that's conviction and now they were told in verse 38 and peter then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins he said he will blot out our sins he will blot out our transgression when we repent so repent and then the lord will blot out your sin there will be the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost in second corinthians chapter 7 we're reading from verse 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation. Godly sorrow, godly sorrow. The sorrow that comes to the heart as the result of realizing that he had seen that she had sinned and he knows that if the judgment day shall come that very time he will face the judgment of God and he will spend eternity far away from God far away from heaven right in hellfire so that godly sorrow will drive them to repentance and that repentance will drive them will grant them salvation not to be regretted of not to be repented of but the sorrow of the world walketh death in Luke chapter 18 verse 13 Luke chapter 18 reading from verse 13 and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast, saying, God, 
be merciful to me a sinner that's the sinner's prayer and it is that that leads to conversion we'll come to number two now number two conversion from sinning by the savior is the lord that converts and he converts them from habitually sinning continually sinning the things they did before as the real conviction has come and the grace of god has come to their heart and it changed a transformation has now come and the lord has granted them grace and righteousness they will not continue in all those things they had done before we must understand that that conversion is the oppression of the spirit of god in the heart of the sinner when that happens the change is immediate the change is instantaneous that conversion that salvation is an instantaneous experience of the grace of god we're told in psalm 51 reading from verse 12 psalm 51 verse 12 restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit when we're saved or when we're restored from backsliding, there'll be the joy of salvation. The person will have an internal joy. It will be like a well of joy, water of joy springing up onto life everlasting. And then it is the Spirit of God that will uphold that person. Uh, you know, as for the person saying, I don't want to read Bible, I have my own church, I have this and that. When there's no conversion, there'll be a lot of excuses. But when there's real conversion and real restoration, the evidence of salvation will be there, the joy of salvation and them being upheld by the Spirit of God. And then in verse 13, it says, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. You restore me, you save me, I have the joy of salvation, I'm being upheld by the Spirit of God. Then I just want to tell other people the good thing that has happened to me, and then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee and sinners shall be converted unto thee conversion means that that person is transformed that person is changed is changed from following satan and is now following after the savior in acts of the apostles chapter 3 reading from verse 19 acts chapter 3 reading from verse 19 and peter said to the people repent ye therefore and be converted repent ye therefore and be converted repentance is not enough repentance is the starting point that the person is not looking up to god i have offended the great god i've offended the merciful god i've offended the loving god and then because this is what offended him i turn away from that and then i look up to him and then he converts me there is conversion be converted that your sins may be blotted out when if a sinner repents and believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of God comes, the oppression of the Spirit of God comes and changes him and converts him. And then his sins are blotted out. If you have written something down, and then you blot it out you will see it is blotted out if there was something on your mind heavy on your mind and you are carrying guilt and condemnation about and the thing that brought the guilt and condemnation is blotted out you will know you'll feel the freedom you will know the freedom you will know that something has taken place if there was something pulling you to always do evil always sin always go the wrong way and that pull is now taken away and the sins are blotted out the remembrance is blotted out the love for the sin is blotted out you will know because you don't have the love to do that sin anymore that is the evidence of salvation is the evidence of conversion it says that your sin may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord you'll feel refreshed you will feel that you are free 
you will free that all the things that bound you all the things that oppressed you all the things that forced you to do evil you will know that all those things are gone refreshing from the very presence of the lord look at verse 26 in verse 26 unto you first god having raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you look at the blessing the blessing of salvation the blessing of conversion the blessing of transformation in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. That's the salvation. That's the conversion. That's the new life that comes as a person repents and believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Romans, Acts chapter 5, verse 30. In Acts chapter 5, verse 30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Verse 31. Then it says, Him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance, to give repentance. As we preach the word of God to sinners, and the Spirit of God takes over, and the Spirit of God convicts them, it's the Lord Himself that gives them repentance. They want to change, they want to repent, they are eager for salvation, and they are eager for the oppression of the Spirit of God to take place in their hearts. And when the Lord has given them repentance, He also gives them repentance because the repentance that the Lord gives is genuine. And now He talks about giving them also the forgiveness of sins. That is the evidence when somebody has repented and that repentance was given to him by God and the Spirit of God had pricked the heart and, and brought him to conviction and he had a sorrow for sin. He went on his knees and said, Lord, I'm definitely, sincerely sorry. I will not continue in that direction anymore. And then forgiveness is given. The Spirit of God will be a witness that he is a child of God. Brothers and sisters, that is real salvation. That's real conversion. And follow-up will be easy. Discipleship will be easy when the fellow is actually born again. In Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Look at verse 2. It says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. When somebody is born again, all the sins he had committed before, he repents of them, he turns away from them, he is dead to do sins. And the sin is dead unto him. There is no connection anymore. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. That's real experience. It's not just, you know, talking to people and then they really don't have the conviction of the Spirit and they do not have real conversion. And then we say, we're following up, come to church, come to church, and they are giving excuses. Have you read your Bible? Uh, they are giving excuses. And th that tract I gave you, did you read it? They are giving excuses. When there is real conversion, is uh, dead to sin uh, and is freed from sin. And then in verse 11, it says in verse 11, likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then in verse 12, it tells us in verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. If temptation comes already, they have Christ living inside them. And the strength and the power, the authority of Christ on the inside and the help of the Holy Spirit will assist them so that they will not be sinning and sinning and still claiming they are saved. It says, let not therefore sin reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the laws thereof. Why? Because in verse 18, it tells us, being them made free from sin. 
when you are saved you are made free from sin when you give your life to the lord you've been convicted of sin and you have repented with godly sorrow from that sin and you have told the lord god helping me i will not continue in those transgressions anymore being then made free from sin you became the servants of righteousness verse 22 in verse 22 but now be made free from sin is the power of Christ in salvation that makes that sinner who has repented, who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that makes him free from sin and free from sinning and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end, the goal, the destination everlasting life let's come to number three here number three here is commitment as saints to the scriptures when they are born again as a newborn babe they'll desire the sincere milk of the word we're told in acts chapter 2 reading from verse 40 acts chapter 2 reading from verse 40 and with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this untoward generation remember uh, peter had told them that was the generation that crucified the lord jesus christ that killed the prince of glory that was the generation that did evil a great evil in the sight of the lord and now he told them if you say you are repenting come out and save yourself and separate yourself from this evil untoward generation and in verse 41 and with many then they that were glad they that gladly received this word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls and then after that what were they doing look at verse 42 these were the people that were committed as saints of god now to the word of god and to the scriptures and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers we're looking at chapter 17 of acts acts chapter 17 reading from verse 11 acts chapter 17 verse 11 these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily not only once a week daily whether those things were so in verse 12 as they were committed to reading the word and searching the word and comparing scripture with scripture on their own wanting to know the validity of what they had learned and what they had believed it says therefore many of them believed even as they were searching the scriptures by themselves many of them believed also of honorable women which were Greeks, Gentiles, and of men, not a few. We're told in First Peter chapter two, reading from verse one. First Peter chapter two, reading from verse one. Wherefore laying aside all malice, after we are born again, those things we used to do, we do them no more. Lay them aside. Those things we used to write that were wrong. We don't try them anymore lay them aside those dresses we used to wear to entice the opposite sex into immorality we don't wear them anymore lay them aside and the violence and the evil we used to do now we have the peace from the prince of peace and because of that we don't go that violent way anymore we lay them aside anything of iniquity anything of transgression anything of sin that we used to practice and we used to rejoice in them if we're truly born again new life has now come and because new life has come we lay them aside wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile 
and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings and then in verse 2 it says we desire as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world as newborn babes spiritual as newborn babes those who are born again as newborn babes those who have the bona fide genuine experience of salvation and christ lives on the inside of them and the spirit of god is bearing witness that these are born again there's a desire there's an inner urge for the milk of the word of God, desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Verse 9 tells us in verse 9, it tells us in verse 9, but she a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Those are the people who are born again. If they are not peculiar, if they are like ordinary sinners, like people in their community like the common people and still committing the common sinners of the community that's not being born again if they're born again they're chosen generation and they're peculiar they're, they're royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that they should show forth the praises of him they don't show forth the praises of the world anymore or the praises of the corruption of the world anymore or the praises of the um, fallen heroes of the world did not show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light in john chapter 8 we're reading from verse 31 john chapter 8 Verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, if he continue in my word. You don't continue your old ways, in your old pattern of life, in your old habit, in your old transgression, in your old gang, in your old society, in your old tradition, but now you claim to be born again and you claim that you have turned away from sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and then in verse 32 and ye shall know the truth how will they know the truth? They love the truth. They search for the truth. And they look at the word of God and they are passionate about the truth. They desire the sincere milk of the word. And that's why how they'll be growing. Because now they know the truth because they're learning the truth. They know the truth because they're seeking the truth. They know the truth because they are passionate about wanting to have the truth of God transform and change their lives completely you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free let's come to point number two now point number two the marks of transferable dynamic discipleship we're coming to acts chapter 15 verse 36 acts chapter 15 verse 36 and some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city, in every city, in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Please understand, as Paul and Barnabas were back to the church in Antioch, from where they were recommended to the grace of God and to the ministry of evangelism that they went for, they became useful because as they came back to the church, there were teachers, there were preachers, there were pastors in the, world, in the church and even apostles. But the duty in that church did not pin them down, bog them down, tie them down, that they will not remember the places where they had gone preaching the word. And so Paul the apostle, remembering those people when the church had been established and remembering those people that had been converted unto the Lord, remembering those people that have come out of the way.
grace and the watch of the Gentile and they have come into the grace of God and they have come to serve the living God Paul the Apostle said we cannot forget them because of the duty in the church there are many people that you know sit tight in the church and they'll never go out and if they go to witness at all or go to preach at all they don't follow up they don't do discipleship because they say the work in the church is too much their responsibility in the church is too heavy so they cannot see the people outside they forget that the people outside are more in number than the people inside think about that as you gather together on the maybe on Sunday or Monday or Thursday or any day the people you see inside no matter how many they are they are they are less than the people outside in that community and Jesus died for those people outside the local church or outside the headquarters church that's why Paul the Apostle said let us go let us go let us go again we've been there before let's move on that's dynamic and that's real discipleship and that's the kind of discipleship the kind of mind and the kind of passion and the kind of commitment and the kind of consecration that paul wants to pass on to the others he passed it on to timothy and timothy was to pass it on to other people that's why we use the word they are transferable and of course it's dynamic look at first corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 first corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 wherefore i beseech you be ye followers of me let me transfer the zeal and the passion and the and the fire unto you is transferable dynamic discipleship be ye followers of me in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 chapter 11 verse 1 be ye followers of me even as i am also of christ did you see how the lord jesus have followed up on peter and the rest of the apostles when they said when peter said i go a fishing and the other said we go with you too and jesus went to them so that he will remind them of what they had learned when he was still alive with them he had told them follow me and i will make you fishers of men now why when jesus christ rose from the dead those people they forgot the commission and the commission they are giving them going into all the world and preach the gospel gospel to every creature and then he told them you're teaching them all things whatsoever i have commanded you before god but jesus went to them and paul the apostle said i am following christ you follow me even as i am following christ so that the passion for discipleship and the passion for preaching the gospel and the passion for going everywhere and preaching unto every creature the good news and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will be transferred unto you as Paul was dynamic you too you will be dynamic Philippians chapter 3 we're looking at verse 17 Philippians chapter 3 verse 17 brethren it's not just talking about Timothy now or Silas or Luke or any of those other people that he transferred the passion of evangelism to is talking to everyone all brethren all believers brethren be followers together of me be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as she have us for an example i pray that this same passion and this same fervency and this same stirring up of the gift within us will happen to everybody in jesus name well, there are three things here number one following the lord and him only number two faithfulness to the lord in honest obedience number three fellowship with the lord without heeding offense let's come to number one following the lord and him only what's discipleship discipleship is simply following after the lord following after the lord if somebody is converted and he remains static remains stagnant 
is not moving forward is not looking at how jesus is making progress and spiritually moving on and is not following that's not a disciple a disciple is one that there is an inner grace and inner strength and inner fire and inner fervency and that makes him to be following after the lord number one then following the lord and him only in Matthew chapter 16 reading from verse 24 Matthew chapter 16 verse 24 then said Jesus unto his disciples 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 if any man will come after me that's following me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me let him take up his cross and follow me let nothing be a stumbling block to you pick it up let nothing weigh you down pick it up let no cross be so heavy that you say because of this trial because of this situation because of this persecution that's why i cannot follow pick it up carry your cross take up your cross and follow me that's what the lord wants us to do look at verse 25 there in verse 25 it says for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it those who are overprotective of their lives overprotective of uh, whatever it is they count their own i cannot go out now this is happening over there that's happening over there and because of that i don't want to lose my life that's the fellow that will lose his life first because whosoever will protect his life over, over protect that life shall lose it but whosoever will throw his life into the hands of the lord jesus and say i know he has commissioned me he has sent me to do what i need to do and nothing will stop me that person will save his life and then in verse 26 in verse 26 for what shall a man not be profited if he shall gain the whole world whole world of business if he shall gain the whole world whole world of extra moral studies whole world of business if he shall gain the whole world they're busy amassing money amassing the things of this world and they do not have the time to carry out the commission of the lord jesus christ now think about it if a business keeps you away and if extra extra education you've got this degree you want another degree again if that keeps you away from the evangelism we're not talking of just walk 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 in the church you can conveniently come and you know sing in the choir or do other things you are doing in the church we're talking about the great commission if whatever business you have and whatever business you are pursuing keeps you away from going out and speaking to souls that they will be saved it says what shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul if everybody was like that businessman and they were busy here and there we cannot evangelize if everybody was like that how are we going to carry out the great commission of the lord jesus christ or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul i pray that business or whatever will not keep us away from this great commission the lord has put in our hands in jesus name did i hear a good amen? amen look at luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 verse 57 it says in verse 57 and it came to pass that as they went in the way a certain man said unto him lord i will follow thee whithersoever thou goest he didn't count the cost to follow the lord whether thou goest would demand your time will demand some discomfort will take some luxury away from you and some of the things you enjoy doing there'll be no time to pursue that enjoyment look at verse 58 in verse 58 and jesus said unto him foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay he said we can't hear the man anymore his decision, his commitment, his consecration, his passion, 
evaporated. Once the Lord said, you want to follow me everywhere I go, but all those places I'm going, I don't have the luxury to promise you. And then all the zeal dried up. Are there people like that? They thought, if I come, I'll get this, I'll get this, I'll get that. And then we'll say, we're not for distributing money. We're not for giving this or giving that. Or they say, I didn't know that's the way. I'll search for another place. They are not ready for service. They are only looking for remuneration. Look at verse 59. In verse 59, and he said to another, follow me. But he said, but Lord, suffer me, permit me, allow me first to go and bury my father. I have some other assignment. In the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, he doesn't think of any other thing in life above reaching out to souls for this kingdom service. And so the fellow was putting something else above the work of God, above the evangelism, above commitment to preaching the kingdom of God in verse, in verse 60 in verse 60 Jesus said unto him let the dead bury their dead let those in the world who have nothing else doing let them take care of those normal traditional sin but go thou and preach the kingdom of God obviously you can tell from that that Jesus counts preaching the word the kingdom of God higher above any other thing in the family any other thing in the business any other thing in the economy he wants the preaching of the kingdom of God to be number one and let's look at verse 61 in verse 61 and another also said Lord I will follow thee no doubt I've made up my mind I'm going to follow you but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And then in verse 62, verse 62, and Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his sand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. The Lord wants us to follow him unreservedly. He wants that to be the priority of our lives. He doesn't want any other thing to conflict with our calling and with the commission and with the going out and preaching the word of the Lord. That's why it says, well, to follow Christ, follow Christ, follow Christ in everything that we do. I pray we'll be followers of Christ. Number two here, number two, faithfulness to the Lord in honest obedience faithfulness to the lord in honest obedience obedience that is not forced obedience that comes out of the heart obedience that is voluntary obedience that we enjoy obedience that becomes part of our lives that we just know this is the priority of my life and this is what i must do honest obedience in luke chapter 16 verse 10 luke chapter 16 verse 10 he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much there are areas of our work that appears small minute little and there are some people that may be faithful in big, big things. When it comes to the doctrine, major doctrines, they're very faithful. But in some little, little things, as the Lord wants you to speak to that person, evangelize that person, and then he reminds you about that other person you need to follow up, pick up your phone now, and talk to the person. And maybe you need to go and see him face to face, but make the contact and make the connection. And so some people over and over are not faithful in those little little things and they say I, I just forgot when it comes to doctrine I remember that one when it comes to some major activity with other people will remember that one but the Lord said he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much and he that is unjust unfaithful in the least is unjust unfaithful in much he wants us to be faithful 
with honest obedience. Not dishonest obedience, not with hypocritical obedience, not with pretending obedience like Saul. I have done what the Lord called me to do. And then Samuel said, How about the bleaching of the sheep I'm hearing? Oh, the people brought that back to sacrifice for your Lord. And then uh, Samuel told them the message of the Lord, he lost the kingdom because of that dishonest hypocritical confession of obedience in first corinthians chapter 4 first corinthians chapter 4 we're reading from verse 1 it tells us let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ and stewards of the mysteries of god in verse 2 it tells us moreover it is required in stewards you're a servant of God, you're a preacher of the gospel, you're a soul winner, you're a worker in the vineyard of the Lord, not just to have your name there as a worker, and then you are not fulfilling the role of the worker. It says it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I pray you'll be faithful. Look at um, Titus chapter 1 verse 9. In Titus chapter 1 verse 9, he's holding forth the faithful word as he has been taught. He's holding forth the faithful word as he has been taught. A faithful person is somebody who has learned. He has received the word. He has believed the word. And when he now goes out to evangelize, he remembers the details of the gospel that we must tell the sinner, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we must tell him, thou art the man, thou art the woman. And you cannot save yourself. It is the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary that can save you. We must be faithful to the word word we have learned they might give excuses they might say this is who they are and this is the church they go this is the religion they belong to we must carry out the word faithfully to tell them the church whatever the name cannot save it is their personal faith in Christ that brings transformation and brings the work of grace effectively in their heart that actually brings them to salvation we must be faithful to the young and to the old, to the highly place and to the lowly. We must be faithful to the word, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. We're looking at number three here. Number three is fellowship with the Lord without Hidden offense. We know that the Lord knows everything and He sees everything. And if there is any offense, if there's any iniquity, if there's any transgression, if there's any secret sin, we're hiding in our heart. We're hiding in our life. And we still say we're following the Lord and we decide we're disciples of the Lord. That cannot be right because we're told in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 6, reading from verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship? has righteousness with unrighteousness or what communion has light with darkness then he tells us in verse 17 in verse 17 he says wherefore come out from among them if we're going to be a disciple of christ if we're going to be a disciple maker going out um, representing the Lord to bring others into the kingdom and to establish others in the kingdom. Wherefore come out from among them and the people were following up and the people were discipling
clean. We're telling them the same thing. If you say you are a disciple, if you say you are following the Lord, if you say you are faithful to the Lord, you must also be in fellowship with Him. And if you are going to be in fellowship with the light, you cannot be in darkness. If you are going to be in fellowship with the saints, you cannot be, um, you know, a sinner. Remain as a sinner. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. Then in verse 18, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I pray that that um, attitude and that disposition of being totally in fellowship with the Lord without any hidden offense, any hidden sin, any hidden iniquity. I pray the converts will see that in our lives and they will follow us well in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 2. Second Corinthians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 2. It's telling us here, it says, But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. If we're disciples of Christ, we have renounced, we are jettisoned, we are forsaking uh, the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking craftily, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience, in the sight of God. I pray that that will be the truth in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Number three now, we're looking at the means of preaching, teaching, and touching different disciples. There are different kinds of people. Some of them have time in the morning, some of them have time in the evening. The different kinds of uh, disciples, some of them are highly educated, some of them are not very educated. There are different kinds of disciples, some of them have been into cults, and some of them have been bound by all those evil things of the past. Other people were just the regular sinners. And so we need to know how we're going to touch those disciples. How we're going to teach those disciples, how we're going to impact those disciples, how we're going to influence those disciples, and the Spirit of God in us will adapt us, will help us and reorientate us to be able to meet each person at their level so that the follow-up of the discipleship will be effective no matter who it is we're following up. That's why we're talking about the various means of teaching and touching the different disciples. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, spiritually maturing the disciples of Christ. That's the purpose of the discipleship. That's the purpose follow up, we are maturing them, we're making them to grow, we're grooming them, we're developing them, we're training them, spiritually maturing the disciples of Christ. Number two, stumbling members denying the doctrine of Christ. There are those who are stumbling already and they're denying the doctrines of Christ and we have to go to them. We have to reach out to them and see how to bring them back. And as we see their level of understanding, maybe they didn't really deeply understand the doctrine of Christ before. And because of that, they fell off. Or maybe they really understood and they have been preaching it. But because, some pre because of some pressures and challenges, they gave up. We need to know what's their level and how to bring them back to stand firm in the things of the Lord. Number three is strategically multiplying disciples for Christ. We're coming to number one. Number one, spiritually maturing the disciples of Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 7. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. 
as we are following up on the disciples, uh, we understand they will be sensitive. We don't criticize them. They might, they might uh, be shy. We don't, uh, you know, force them into anything. We'll know how to gently lead them as a nurse cherishes her children. Even as a nurse cherishes her children, Paul the Apostle said, that's how we are gentle among you. Gentleness will be reflected in your voice. Gentleness will be reflected in your demeanor, in your, in, your, in your comportment, in the way you act, in the way you talk to them. When you've discovered a fault, and when you've discovered some sluggishness, and when you've discovered some things that need to be corrected, the way you say it, and the way you talk to them, and the way you approach them will tell whether you're a gentle nurse, a gentle mother, a gentle father, a gentle a soul winner or not. It says in verse 8, in verse 8 it tells us about that attitude, about the disposition, the ought to manifest and we ought to manifest. It says so being affectionately desirous of you we want them to get to heaven that's the bottom line, that's the final thing. It's not just that I'm carrying out my duty because you are desirous of them and you want them to be who they ought to be in Christ that affects your attitude if I approach it that way that might drive him off that might drive her, drive her far away but affectionately desirous of you we were willing to have been parted unto you not the gospel of God only not just knowledge but also our own souls because you are dear unto us look at verse 10 in verse 10 it tells us we ye are witnesses and God also how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe we behaved the way a matured person ought to behave. What we're calling them to is what we're demonstrating before them. Are you checking up on your own disciple making, discipleship? And is it this? How you have the passion, the compassion to bring them higher than they have been? Look at the result in verse 13. In verse 13, it says, For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The word works in them. And let's look at chapter 3, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, we're reading from verse 10. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, night and day praying exceedingly. We need to pray before we go to them, before we reach out to those converts, and before we make the attempt to mature them. It says, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face. Look at the purpose, look at the reason, and look at what they were going to do when they got there, so that we might perfect that which is lacking in your faith, to perfect that which is lacking in your faith. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 28. Here is, you know, the process of maturing. Here is the passion to mature. Here is the desire to make sure that when they go to those converts, they actually mature them. It says whom we preach, warning every man. Look at that, every man teaching every man look at that every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in christ jesus three times in one verse he mentions every man every man every man we're not making excuses that one cannot go beyond that level every man that we're warning every man 
were teaching her every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. May the Lord give us more grace in Jesus' name. Number two here, number two is tumbling members denying the doctrine of Christ. Stumbling members denying the doctrine of Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, we're reading from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits doctrine and doctrines of devils when people the, the people you are following up when they've gone the wrong direction they've gone to a church that does not believe the totality of the bible a church that is adding tradition adding occultism adding you know some other things to the real word of god and you see that the person has gone away into that and is now propagating and is now reflecting all those things you remember that the Spirit spoke expressly that in these latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils you will see how to help those stumbling members number one you will not be stumbling yourself you will not go to all those things yourself but you will help them and recover them and as you do the Lord bless you in Jesus name let's go to number three now number three is strategically multiplying disciples for Christ disciples will multiply I said disciples will multiply through you through me as we do it together they will multiply in Jesus name Acts of the Apostles chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 1 in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied in those days the number of the disciples was multiplied if it happened then it can happen now and it will happen now and it must happen now look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says and the word of god increased that didn't that doesn't mean they were printing more bibles it just says more people were receiving the word of god and we can find it in that person in that person in that community in that community and the word of god was getting to many people more people and the word of god increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. The Lord did it at that time. He can do it again. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great number, a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Even those who were preaching, those who had not been born again, and yet they were preaching, uh, you know, their uh, Judaism, and they were preaching their law, and they were preaching all those things, and the word of God spread. The word of God spread to them also. And it says a great number of the priests were obedient to the faith. I pray God will repeat that even at this our time in Jesus' name chapter 9 of Acts Acts chapter 9 we're reading from verse 31 Acts chapter 9 reading from verse 31 then at the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and they were edified a church will be edified walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied can it happen today can it happen through you can it happen through me can it happen through us together we must dedicate ourselves then to dynamic discipleship to know that this is our time the paul were reading about and the silas were reading about and the timothy were reading about they have gone they have gone to their rewards it is now our time and in this our time we will do as they did in those old days in jesus name we even have opportunities that they don't have they didn't have cars we have cars there was no airplane at that time there's no plane now there was no printing press at that time there's printing 
press now and all this social media we can use now they were not available at that time they are available now there is more education now more people in the kingdom of God we can read the Bible and even the unbelievers have copies of the Bible in their hands a lot of advantages we have today if they did what they did at that time without all these advantages with great advantage that we have we will do more I said we will do more but we must recommit ourselves to the Lord and say Lord whatever it will take help me Lord I will be my best I will do my best and God will use every one of us to expand his church and to make the number of disciples to make them multiply in Jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer the Lord is depending on you and the Lord is depending on me he's telling us he appreciates what we have done and we're praising God for what we've done already but then there are more people outside than those who are inside than those who are with us here that's the reason why we need to reach out in evangelism that's the reason why we need to employ all methods we need to employ all the means all the models everything we have to do so that more people will hear the word of God from you and from me and and from us and from the church together every community must be rich every every local government must be rich and every person must be rich all those who are still in darkness they must see the light of the gospel shining onto them they must receive the gospel the good news of salvation through you and through me dedicate yourself commit yourself to what the Lord has called us to do open your mouth and pray and tell the Lord yes Lord I will yes Lord I will yes Lord I will Paul did it at his own time I will do it at my own time and Peter did it at his own time at my own time I will do it and uh, Timothy and Silas and Luke and all those disciples they did it even Stephen and Philip all of them did it they did it in various ways oh Lord I will do what you have called me to do tell the Lord tell the Lord commit yourself you must be concerned for the people who are perishing you must be concerned for the souls who are dying without the gospel you must be concerned for those who are dying prematurely concerned for those who do not have the light of the gospel they do not have the power of the gospel that turns them away from sin and turns them onto righteousness you must be concerned for people who are religious but not righteous you must be concerned for people who do not know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior do you have salvation yourself then go and tell others you have the joy of salvation you have the excitement that you are born again you are a child of God then go and tell others and do you have the conviction that if anyone died without having salvation without being born again if they died in religion if they died even in the church and they do not have salvation do you know they will perish forever and ever do you know what that means that they'll be tormented in hell they'll suffer in hellfire forever and ever if they don't have salvation what are you doing there how are you contacting them how are you reaching out to them and for the people you have reached out to and they claim to be born again and they claim to be saved are you checking up on them let's go again to all the places who have preached the word of god and see how they do do you know how those converts are doing? Do you know how those converts are following the Lord? Do you know how those converts are steadfast in the Lord? Do you know how those converts are living by the standard of the Word of God? Go and see them. Go and check up on them. Go and contact them and impact life into them and impact more grace into them and impart unto them what you have that makes you running, what you have that keeps you up, what you have that gives you the grace and the strength to keep on moving on. Go and impart that unto them as well and, and give not just the gospel, give your very life and give your very soul and be willing to sacrifice anything of for them tell them tell them tell them tell them lovingly 
tell them gently and tell them convincingly tell them persuasively and let them know the love of god you have for them reaching out to them don't allow the sinners around you to perish and don't allow the people who have come to know the lord through you or through some other people in your community don't allow them to go back and then die in a life die in a life that is useless that is not committed unto the lord go tell them go tell them do it with passion, do it with fervency, and do it with fire in you, and do it with love, irresistible love. Check up on them. If you check up on them and they are not forthcoming, do it again. If you do it and they are not coming for, do it again. Don't give up on anybody. Don't give up on anybody. Are they facing challenges? Are they facing difficulties? Maybe that's why they are drawing back. Maybe that's why they are not showing interest. Maybe that's why they are forgetting. You know, the experience of salvation they already have run after them. Run after them. You see how Jesus did it? You do it like that as well. You see how Paul the apostle did it? Do it as well like that. And when Barnabas was not forthcoming, Paul did not say, well, since uh, um, Barnabas is not uh, willing to go now, maybe we'll stop everything. I cannot do it alone. But he found another partner. He found Silas. And then as they went out, they found Timothy. And then Luke was also around. Get all the people you can get of the believers and reach out together and touch lives together and reach the people together. You saw methods and you saw avenues by which you can reach the people don't be tired and don't give up so soon don't give up so soon those who sell commodities of the world they don't give up they keep on they keep on publicizing they keep on announcing they keep on knocking on doors they keep on trying to be a good salesman saleswoman you do the same thing as well you have the greatest commodity anybody can have in this life the gospel of the lord jesus christ that will bring people to salvation that will bring them to eternal life you have the greatest sin you can ever offer another person be excited about it and be persuasive about it and let the spirit of God compel you to go and do it with all your heart and do it with all your soul don't mind the difficulties don't mind all the stumbling blocks you might meet on the way don't mind all the hurdles you might meet on the way reach out to the people so that by the grace of God the strength of the Lord will carry them the power of the Lord will carry them the spirit of the Lord will energize them the fire burning in you will be transferred into them as sure dynamic so they too they'll be dynamic and they will follow after your example and they will have the same effect on other people that you have on them like paul the apostle influenced timothy and then told timothy to find faithful men and women and then those faithful people will find other faithful people so that the chain will continue and the chain of uh, passion and the chain of fervency and the chain of uh, going out uh, with all consecration that chain will not be broken at your own time and will not be broken at your point keep on telling them and keep on reaching out don't allow any day to be lost without reaching out to some of those converts they may be your converts they may be a converts they mean somebody of somebody else's converts but by all means and with all possible means follow up on them follow up on them until they established until they're matured until they are steadfast until they are consecrated until they are committed as paul the apostle reproduced himself in timothy you reproduce your passion and reproduce your your zeal and reproduce your commitment and reproduce your consecration in the people you are following up and let the fire burn let the fire burn let the fire the fire 
of the gospel the fire of the spirit and the fire of appropriate zeal let it burn in the hearts of the people and reach out to them reach out to them and many of them are waiting but you say well i'm discouraged now nobody is coming to me many of them are waiting i am down now lift them up go there at the right time let the spirit of god minister to you and touch your life and then remind you of so and so remind you of such and such so that you will be useful in reaching out at the appropriate time to the people you need to reach out to the lord will help you the lord will help you and don't allow the commitment to stop here the consecration to stop here don't allow the prayer to stop here don't allow the burning flame to stop here let it carry you on and carry you forth and carry you forward that as you are going home you're ready to contact him those people and every day every day you must make it a habit make it a habit that you are reaching out to other people not just at the spot the moment now but every day every time consistently persuasively and um, graciously you are doing it every time and the lord will bless your efforts if you do it with all your heart and you do it of all your soul and you pray as you are doing it and you have the grace of god and you have the help of the holy spirit while you are doing it the lord will bless your effort and then many people will be established in the faith many people will be grounded in the faith many people will be matured and they'll be growing in their faith because you yourself you are growing as a disciple and as a disciple maker as well let the grace of God increase in your life let the vision for follow-up increase in your life. Let the passion to serve the Lord increase in your life. And let the fire, the flame of the fire come up and grow in your life. And do it with all the seriousness and all the consecration you have. And the Lord will bless his work in your hand. In Jesus' name we pray and the people dynamic people of god who are ready to follow up and disciples others in jesus name we pray father we thank you for this hour thank you lord for what you have exposed and revealed unto us we pray lord as you have promised that will baptize us with the holy ghost and fire i pray that the holy ghost and the power the anointing the unction and the fire and the flame will come upon everyone in jesus name you make your ministers flames of fire and i pray lord all the passion we need i pray lord all the zeal we need i pray that everything we need to make us remember every time and to make us be in a state of revival every time and we're reaching out and we're touching the lives of people and we're beckoning on them and we're reproducing the zeal of the lord in their lives oh lord give it to every one of us in Jesus name for those of us who are getting tired for those of us who are getting weary and for those of us who are just as slow and sluggish I pray Lord you'll grant us more grace you'll grant us more strength you'll grant us more power and I pray Lord what to expect of us will be done in Jesus name Lord, I pray, will be good examples to the people who are following up. And the same zeal that we want to see in them, they'll see in us. The same power, the same unction, the same seriousness, the same righteousness we want to see in them, they will see in us in Jesus' name. We pray that this, your work, will prosper in our hands. Lord, anything we lack, that is not making us as effective as we ought to be, supply that need in our lives. Help us, Lord. Lift us up. Encourage your people and send them forth with the power of the Holy Ghost so that we will do all we need to do effectively and efficiently in Jesus' name. Lord, we will bear fruit. The brother there will bear fruit. 
the sister there will bear fruit. All of us will bear fruit. And our fruit will remain and abide in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O Lord. And none of your people will lose their reward. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.